Prior to removing a foropter arm, it's a good idea to mark the position on the pole of where the foropter arm was sitting, which I did with this uh, magic marker position prior to removal. To remove um, or uh, replace a foropter arm, you need to remove everything uh, above on the pole. If there's a um, lighting typically uh, is the main thing. If you're to remove a keratometer arm, then you've got to remove not only the lighting, but the foropter arm, which would be sitting above it. To remove um, this light, there's this set screw. Some of these um, Marco stands don't have a set screw for the lighting. This one does, but you do have to remove the screw completely. The other step in removing this light is you need to separate the internal wire. This snaps together and then to keep from losing it inside the pole you need to have um, a long cord to make sure it's not lost. The proper arm is locked in place by a large Allen wrench. I believe it's like an 8 millimeter. Um, So again, dealing with the wire, you have to deal with the cord and make sure that you feed the cord through the throbter arm before you collar, before you put it back together again. The lighting piece only snaps in one way, so you don't have to worry about getting it together wrong. The collar of the foropter arm can be <clears throat> equipped with a quick release lever. However, you're still dealing with the uh, massive weight of the of the arm. Furthermore, if you've got the foropter on the arm, it makes it tremendously heavier. When removing or installing this section of the arm, there's a certain amount of play it has. Typically with the fropter weight, I try to counteract it by t tilting it in this direction and then tightening the uh, two screws. And that tends to keep the arm more horizontal when the fropter weight is on it. To counterbalance the fropter arm, there's an adjustment screw inside this space which can be reached when the arm is all the way in the up position. A four millimeter Allen wrench can fit into the screw head and you can make adjustments in small amounts by turning it 
or if you remove this portion of the arm by removing the two screws that secure it, by removing this portion of the arm you can actually get a straight in with the um, Allen wrench to make greater turns. Instead of turning one sixth turn at a time, you can turn 180 degrees, 360 degrees continuously to take up some of the slack on the spring. This is now counterbalanced pretty well. The second counterbalance screw is uh, close to the pole, which it can then be uh, tightened using a four millimeter Allen wrench at this point. But definitely tough to do left-handed. So. Removing the ferropter is, uh, is done by re first removing the set screw that fits inside the ferropter arm. There's a slot underneath the this section of the ferropter arm which allows a screw to be inside here so when you remove or replace the ferropter the set screw should be removed first. Without this set screw if you happen to loosen this knob by mistake it could then slide right off the pole but with the um, set screw in place it's not going to go anywhere. So this arm is fairly well counterbalanced now. It doesn't drop all the way to the bottom. It doesn't go all the way to the top. Pretty well in the mid-range of its motion. And to line up the ferropter in place, the near point rod is helpful. Get the near point rod level with respect to the floor or wall features and then using this knob level the bubble. So if this knob is loosened the um, ferropter tilts out of orientation and so loosening this knob leveling it with the near point rod and then tightening the knob and then leveling the bubble.